afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today, we have a special video for you. I am here at Blackout Tinning. We're here with Josh, his beautiful Porsche GT4, and we're gonna get some seat time in this baby. All right, guys, so as you know, I am here at Blackout Tinning fairly often, it seems. I haven't been here for a while, though, and Josh called me and asked me if I wanted to do a special kind of video for you guys. There is, believe it or not, a huge market for people that are looking for a C8 Corvette that are also looking at this specific Porsche. Now, you guys are all gonna kill me in the comments, I know. I know, I know this is called a Porsche, okay? Let's not, <laughs> I, don't tear me apart too bad. I'm just so used to calling this a Porsche that it's gonna come out every now and then, so I'll do my best for you guys. But with that said, we are gonna get some time in this particular Porsche, and yeah, we're gonna see what's going on with it. So just a little bit of a backstory for those of you who don't know, this is Josh, this is his car, this is his business, and we're gonna get some seat time in this thing and see how well or how much it compares to the C8 Corvette. So like I said, these cars are actually fairly comparable on a couple different aspects. So even horsepower, the zero to 60 time, it's all fairly similar. It's, they're both obviously mid-engine cars. The biggest difference comes right there. Yeah, so it's a brand new 2020 GT4 and it's a manual. Like how freaking awesome is that? I love that car companies are still doing this. But anyway, I digress. We're gonna hop into the GT4. We're gonna take it for a spin. Josh is gonna hop into my C8 and take it for a spin. So we're gonna get similar reports from myself as well as him. But what we're gonna do here, this is obviously gonna be on my channel. I'm gonna give you guys all the information on the GT4 right here on Horsepower Obsessed. If you wanna see what Josh feels about the C8 Corvette, you're gonna hop over to his channel. And that of course is Blackout Tinting. I'll put all the information in the description down below. But anyway, let's get into the specs on the GT4 and start this video. Josh just handed me the keys. And the first thing you're gonna notice here is, oh man, it matches the exterior of the car. Now, what's really odd here, and I don't know if I'll be able to fix this or not, but this car is not blue. Um, it, I mean, technically it's called Miami blue, but in person it is much more teal. But on the camera, this thing looks almost like rapid blue on the c8 it is not this is much more teal and this paint matches perfectly obviously this was like a 500 hundred dollar option but you know josh is kind of a madman so he does these kind of things anyway let's get in this thing so right off the bat we notice again color matched interior parts here which i think is a pretty cool touch i know apparently on josh's channel some people don't like this but i i would definitely do this the leather on here feels closer to the Napa leather on the Corvette, not so much the Milan. So this is definitely a higher quality leather in here, I think. The seats have the Alcantara centers and the leather outsides. Color match seat belts. I don't know. Who else, who else do you guys know that does that kind of stuff? But yeah, the manual thing, we're definitely gonna have some fun with this car. So let's get out on the road with this thing. All right, guys, we're in the car. We're gonna take this extraordinarily overpriced key <laughs> and we're gonna start this baby up now you guys if you don't know this is a flat six yep four liter yep so four liter flat six 415 horsepower 414 yep 414 414 horsepower 309 torque yeah not very torquey it doesn't sound like it would be a competitor for the c8 but it absolutely is so the car as it sits Josh paid about 115,000 for. But it starts at around 99. But anyway, let's hear it. Now, before you get going, there's three buttons that you have to push. That you don't know about. Number yeah, one guys, is pay attention. The auto shut off is garbage and nobody needs that in life. Open the exhaust valves. There it is. And then turn the maybe you don't want the yeah, auto blip, but I love the auto. Blip Everybody button. loves the auto blip. You guys with the C7s, you know how it is. Yep. All right, so while we're waiting for traffic, I just want to mention to you guys, I've driven one Porsche before. It was an older Boxster. And uh, the one thing I noticed, and the same as applies to this car, is the clutch release is really high. So if you're used to driving the C7, this is a different kind of experience. 
the, you're gonna have a lot of travel down low and it doesn't start catching until much higher up on the clutch. I like this wheel though. It's like perfectly driver centric. There's no unnecessary buttons and stuff. Yeah, on it. They eliminated all buttons. So <laughs> immediately I, I realized there is a massive amount of power I haven't even touched yet because that was like three, 4,000 RPM and there's still plenty more to go. Yeah, the gears are tall. They, <laughs> it, it'll scream like past 5,000, you all, honestly almost feel like you're hurting the car. Yeah. It just wants to scream. So the, the only other flat plane crank car I've driven was a GT350 and it was the same kind of thing. It's like just when you think the car is out of it there's still 2000 rpm left so I'm, I'm curious to see exactly how this one's going to feel but i really like the wheel the steering wheel is like perfect it's the perfect size there's no unnecessary buttons on it it's just it's porsche <laughs> so guys the rev match on this car i don't know if it's because it's a mid-engine or what it is exactly but when you downshift and the rev match kicks in there is literally no feeling. It, it feels like you're driving automatic. There's no jerkiness at all. It's, it's like perfect. Now, what I do notice, and I don't know if this is because I have the MGW shifter in my ZR1, the shifter, it's good, but it feels kind of soft. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it's because of my MGW shifter or not, but that thing's like a bolt action rifle. So it probably is because of that, but. I noticed that too, because from the Lambo with the gated. Yeah. it's. It's Real soft. Really hard, you know. That's still that's still only five thousand RPM. That was five thousand RPM and I felt like I was just about at the top of it. I'm so used to driving a Corvette where the red line's sixty five hundred. You're either in sport or, or race, basically. Okay. So as long as this red button is on, you're basically in race, which is it's always in. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true car guy here. Just like the Hellcat, I lost the black key. I have no idea where it's at. <laughs> yeah. All right, so with that said, I feel like you could daily drive this car. This feels, it feels pretty, I don't want to say smooth or soft because you can definitely feel the road, but it's not jarring, so. Porsche's had a long time to really purify, I guess, this platform, solidify it, because you can tell there's a lot of work that has gone into this. All right. We got to dodge you further than that. I'll tell you what, guys, for a, a 6, I, know, I keep wanting to say V6. I know it's not. It freaking sounds awesome. This is just a stock exhaust still. Sport Cup 2 tires on this guy. Good brakes too. Oh yeah. Your Zero One has Sport Cup 2s, right? Yeah. The Sport Cup 2 tires are no joke. And this car, I, you can tell there was much less weight, especially over the rear wheels, which is weird that I say that. But Just gotta watch for traffic, that's all. That thing just revs forever. Forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, coming through these turns, this car has, it feels like it's a feather. There's no weight to it at all. And I almost slowed down to that turn, but I was like, nah, I know these Sport Cup 2s. They got some grip. first got this car I kept telling him I am not really a big fan of Porsche but this thing <laughs> this thing is just freaking crazy it is just an absolute 
it's such a departure from what I'm used to with Porsches or Porsches. I told you I'd do it. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. This turn's fun to hit kind of hard. Let's hit this turn kind of hard though. It's a combination of the fact that this car is lighter weight, it's a manual, and it's got stickier tires. That by itself is making this way more fun than I thought it would be. Yeah, I, I want to drive these back roads in fourth gear the entire time. Yep. Maybe even third, because this thing, I keep forgetting, like, the highest I've read this thing so far was like 6,800 RPM. And I, I want to I take it out. I want to take it all the way out. As soon as this guy moves, we're going to do it. <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm such a, a sucker for red and black, but this, this thing is, <laughs> he's making a trip to Miami because of this color. You gotta get a picture. Miami and Miami blue. Miami blue and Miami. Yeah. There you go. Get over. Do it. Do it. Yeah. I agree with you. 
has a very distinct click. Like yeah, you can definitely tell when you're in gear. Yeah. I haven't missed a shift yet. Yeah. So just driving wise, this is pretty cool. I, I feel right at home here. Like these these rev match downshifts. I, I'm, I don't even know how to explain it. Like we have rev match in the C7, obviously with the the manual ZR1, but this one is just so much smoother. Whenever you downshift, it it selects the exact right RPM. You can literally just drop the clutch, and it doesn't feel like anything happened. Now I do notice. You can I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera or not, but the flat plane crank. You get the little bit of the noise vibration harshness. I can feel it back there but probably no more than the V8, to be honest with you. I mean, I can feel it, but the V8 rumbles a good bit too. There's something about a car that redlines this high that I, I, it's almost like, it, it, it's not natural. It almost feels unnatural, but if I was born into the Porsche crowd the way Josh was, I'm sure it would make a little bit more sense, but like I keep on, I'm shifting at like 2000 RPM. This car is like, what are you doing? Shift me at five or six. Interesting. <laughs> Surprised you didn't say anything about the key being on the left. Well, that is another thing, but that's such a Porsche thing. Yeah, yeah. We're used to putting the key over on the left. I don't know if you guys know that. I guess I should have mentioned that. Josh calling me out here, but this, <laughs> this is on the left, not the right. So typically you have a push button on the right. This actually goes all the way over on the left, which is kind of odd, but Germany. All right, guys, we are back. That is going to do it for today's video. So as you saw there, we got to play around with the GT4 a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy into the specs with this car. This is mostly just kind of a drive video. I will spend some more time with this car in the future, though, going over all of the options, all of the specs, and kind of more of a review style video. Huge thank you to Josh. Huge thank you to Blackout Tinning. Like I said, guys, he also took my C8 for a drive. So be sure to go over to their channel, check out what his impression of the C8 is coming from the fact that he is a gt4 owner definitely an interesting car but what it ultimately comes down to for me is that these are two extremely different driving experiences not bad by any means whatsoever i actually really enjoyed this car and for what you pay you know i mean a hundred thousand dollars is not cheap by any means but for what you get with this car, I think $100,000 is very reasonable. These are these are very comparable cars. A lot of guys who want a C8 have looked at a GT4 and vice versa. So I thought that this would be kind of acceptable for the channel. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. So if you liked what you saw, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about the content, shoot them in the comment section down below or shoot me an email. And if you guys haven't checked out Blackout Tinning's channel yet, definitely make sure to do so. They have a lot of awesome cars on there all the time. This is actually the owner's car, so you can kind of gauge from this what kind of cars he's into. And yeah, they're awesome people. They deserve a subscribe and a like, so head over to their channel, check them out. But if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. I have loads of C8 content, C7 content coming you're not going to want to miss. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next upload.